Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 31 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things back up in the autumn season of year 200 on turn 52. So last time we made a major move in vassalizing Liu Bei. And not only does this give us a very strong vassal or ally, whichever way you want to think about it, it also secures us a very secure northern frontier. Now, it seems like they're still losing land to Yuan Shao, who has landed and established a beachhead here in the Central Plains and have a few army on the run, actually. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like they're pretty beat up and they're on the run. Um, we're not going to have to worry about that just yet. What I want to do going forward is to take Chen farmland so we can peace out with Luo Jun. I don't want to be the faction that actually destroys him because I want to eventually have a chance to acquire him. So perhaps having some other factions, maybe Yuan Shu wiping them out would be better for us. We might have to proxy war to make that happen, but we do have that option since we are playing as Cao Cao. On the other hand, we are also hoping to finish up the war with Lady Gun over here. Uh, we have our army in position, we'll be wiping them out, and that faction will be destroyed, securing us a solid uh, eastern front. Um, we're at the edge of the map, so there's really nothing that can bother us. Potential naval invasions, but given that Liu Bei has the Shandong Peninsula, he's our vassal, we have perfect vision over the coastline. We can see enemies coming way ahead of time. We should be relatively safe. Uh, so let's get started here. There's a level up on Xiaohou Yuan. And we're hoping to move him towards Vengeance, Flame of the Phoenix, into Reach. Even though he probably doesn't need Reach anymore because we already have it on the leading general here, in the commanding general. Uh, but I think giving him Resolve for more health will be excellent. And we're just gonna... Ooh, we cannot Reach. That is a bit awkward. Are they at war with Lady Gun? They are. Oh, we might run into the situation where they take it down before we do. Hmm. This once again has to do with the load air. Because we are coming at a fresh start in this episode, we load it into the game, we lose the bonus on the reach, therefore we cannot reach them. Whereas we could have before then. There's... hmm. Is there any way around this? Probably not. Well, we're not going to be there to reinforce them. We're going to just sit right here, probably in ambush mode, so they don't come out. And hopefully they can defend against one wave of attack, or else we're going to lose the fishing port to our vassal, which is not a big deal. We can always annex in the future. And hopefully there's enough movement left in this army. Yes, there is. Okay, so let's get this taken care of first. No one's there, so it's just going to be a very simple delegate. We still don't have night battle in this army, which is rather concerning, actually. Well, I need to rank up one more time, I believe. We'll take the Occupy. Alright, now we can negotiate a peace deal. He actually has expanded more than I thought. He has all of Nanyang. Oh, he is not gonna get wiped by another faction. I thought this is all he had. Well, our attention is gonna turn onto Liu Biao and Huang Zu, and eventually He Yi as well. So, I'm still gonna pursue Welcome the peace Mason. deal. It's rather nice. And we could potentially get a vassalization. Oh no, he is varied against this idea, so no, that's not possible. Any items you might have? Nope, he has everyone equipped. I don't really want a non-aggression pack in case we do want to fight them in the future. I'm sure we can get a territory, but the problem is this is his capital, and if we trade for anything else, it's going to overextend us. We're going to be in contact with the likes of Yuan Shu, who is likely to attack us. Or if we take Nanyang's Jade Mine, which is an excellent county, um, we are going to have to defend it somehow. Because we can't move this army to it. You see there's no road, we have to go through mm, Runan over here. So taking this doesn't really help us. We might just lose it right away. Right, so I can't get 
value from this 42 points. He's not going to pay us a ton. The ratio is going to drop off really, really quickly. Actually, he's quite rich. Huh. He's very poor here. Like, if we ask for a thousand flat. Oh, he's generous, though. Like, what if we ask for all his money? All right, he only has 3,948. That's 16 points. Okay. See, but the problem here is I can lower this by a bunch. Because I'm getting 200 more, 2,000 more. So I can lower this by a bunch. It would still make more sense to add over here than over here. Alright, I don't see why we wouldn't just go for like this and just completely ignore that and we'll still end up with more. Okay, we have it right, 1590 per turn for 10 turns. Sounds like a great deal. That's a huge boost to our income. And we will accept. And Liu Bei likes us for this peace deal. Yuan Shu even likes us for this peace deal. Everyone likes us for this peace deal. Very good. All right, so we don't have to deal with them for a while. We have a ton of characters in the recruitment pool this turn. So let's go take a peek. First scan is just for items, and then we probably want to take a look at... Okay, she has a stone pig, pretty bad. Another stone pig, and then a quick look at traits from the top. Oh, that might be a burn buff. Nope, it's just bright. Psyched us out there. I guess not. So no one really impressed us there, and we don't need any of them. Now we should probably cycle Guo Si again. There is no threat here anymore, so we don't need him to be an administrator. He's going to go back in becoming, I guess, Grand Director for this turn. Just because I don't really need the 10% recruitment, getting extra food at least. Help us with reserves and bonus peasantry income for the next turn at least. And over here, we're going to send him over to Northern Jian'an, because there's a lot of green buildings that needs to be built. Alright, and then we can shift him over next turn, and we can get the peasantry boost. Peasantry, industry, and trade influence is pretty much what we're looking for. Alright, so our armies have moved. Um, we have Liu Bao's army stuck here. I don't want him to pick off our burn officers. We are turning our attention on them next. Let's take a look at what we have here. Vision's pretty clear, no enemies really, so we'll just be marching over here to take uh, Wunan. Both of the pieces will march across, and we'll see what we want to do with Xiangyang. Not so keen on taking it, but we probably want to take everything on this coast, even though, okay, He Yi we're not at war with, this is Tai Mao who we are at war with. We probably want to take everything here, and then also extend our reach towards here. There's a weapon craftsman here. There's two on the map. We already own the other one here. We can own both of them and get more weapons that way. So the only thing unfortunate is we weren't able to attack this. Hopefully Guan Yu won't be able to take it, even though the army looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, we have a spy here. Speaking of spies... I don't want to extract her. Oh, we still have this silver armor that we have been ignoring. Maybe we'll grab him. Yeah, no one no one really interesting here. No base faction. We have saved up quite a bit of points. Let's see who... Oh, she is very... 17 points. Oh. So there's a chance she could just get angry enough just to leave the faction. She's a general though, so there's no increase in desire um, for lack of purpose. Let's see, who can we get? I think we mentioned Lu Meng. Right, he's a 39, but he's not susceptible to discredit character. Oh, he is. Perfect. So he will drop to 9 points after this, and perhaps... Okay, so he has no defense mechanism for undercover network, plus 2 for cover. Perhaps he's willing to become a turncoat now that he has dropped. Let's refresh this. Now that he has dropped in only 9 points. Nope, he's not willing to be a turncoat, ever. That's fine. 
uh, we're going to work our way towards using Discredit Faction, which should be available in two turns, which is okay, because he will still have the minus 30 on him, and we should be able to steal the Moon this way. There's not really anyone else I'm that interested in. He also has an armor. We can tell by the headgear. Okay, that's fine. We should probably take a deeper look into diplomacy. This is one aspect that we haven't really been dealing with recently. Um, probably just first quick deals. Okay, Liu Bell's had enough, even though we haven't really attacked their land yet. Lady Gun wants the peace deal. Wang Zhu. No, we want to take all their land, so no deal there. High Empire military access, not that interested. Yeah, nothing really here. Now what we haven't been doing is looking at the negotiate. Now Lady Wu is one faction we would like to keep a positive relationship. We could utilize credibility or we can just work other deals in. Uh, they have a general who is part of the family, got adopted. Huh, interesting. They have a future daughter in Sun Yun who will come of age on turn 87. Very important here. And we can try to grab her on that turn. Aside from that, before that point, we can probably just try to make deals with them. Just to keep them happy with us. We can offer them a minimum of one food. And doesn't matter what we get back. We can actually... We can... Oh, I was hoping to get five points before it goes only to point one. Because then we can get favorable deals. Now, of course, we're pretty rich. So, okay, they're pretty demanding, not gonna lie here. How about, how about, wait, why can't I click that? Oh, there we go. That was weird. Couldn't click that one. I can throw them quite a bit of gold, actually, or copper, or 40 per turn. Now the goal here obviously is to get it to exactly 5.0 to get 15 point trending. If we don't have that, you don't get any. So there's really no point here except for continuous dealing. Um, it's too pricey. I'm not willing to pay him that much. So just not going to happen. going to hope that she doesn't want to declare war on us anytime soon until 87. After that we can go to war. Alright, I think we're fine. I don't really care about everyone else's relationship with us. So let's grab that officer with the silver armor. Take his armor, because in the future it's great peace and diplomacy. He obviously we have no interest in. So he's just going to get fired right away. Not going to sit here and eat up our income. Do we have any other wasteful characters? She is a burn officer who happens to also be a bandit officer. It's just wonderful. Um, but anyhow, we're happy with everyone else. Let's continue. Oh, actually, no. We didn't do buildings. Right, forgetting stuff here. Done, yeah. All right, we have the building all the way up to where the reform would allow us. Time to increase the trade port to level 5. That's the last thing we can do before ranking it up again so we can build a 6 building. Why none here? We have maxed out our replenishment pretty much, so there's really no need to upgrade the rice garrison anymore unless we are hoping to get imperial units down the line. Right now we don't really care about that, so we're not really going to go for it. Instead we'll go for some industry income. Chen looks fine to me. Hong Cheng needs the adjacency corruption reduction, that is very key. We're actually out of money, which means this can be waiting. I don't really need that extra hundred. We need more corruption reduction, so the money needs to be spent here. And after that, we really don't have any more money left. So, oh, actually, he's here, so this should be really cheap. Yeah, 392. We'll just pop that in. And that's all we need to do. Let's continue. Oh, our spy got executed. She discovered her. Very interesting. Lady Gun died. I bet the faction's gone. She didn't execute her. Liu Bei executed her. Okay. So they beat us to it. Mm, bit unfortunate. 
But what we can do here... Now we finished one of our challenges. This is very early on. Remember how Tao Tian killed our father? That was the challenge issued and passive glory, five turns of population growth in our counties, peasantry income, public order, good stuff. And we should get a new challenge, All right? The game always try to give factions challenges based on history. Uh, here, they want us to restore or capture the capital again. Mm, this is currently being held by Yuan Shu, who I don't mind killing. So that is a possibility. We don't need this army anymore. Uh, it's kind of sad we didn't get this, which makes me almost want to trade this away, except for we can get corruption reduction here. So maybe not. Hmm. We could trade it away, actually. Like, potentially, of all of Liu Bei's holdings, we can see that his capital is here in Langya. We can fight these battles for him and then trade it back to him using 1, 2, 3 to trade for all of Dong. Dong is pretty lucrative given the iron mine plus a harbor commandery. Hmm. But then we have to defend Dong. But we probably have to defend Dong anyways because we need to fight the north. Guess it's not that crucial right now. Alright, we're going to move this army this way. We're going to get them ready for the invasion against um, He Yi's faction. I am hoping they destroy this. I don't know if they will, but that is the hope. Let's send them here. Liu Bei is just moving across large paths of land. Okay. Uh, we don't need healing, so we can just go all the way in. Nobody's home. We'll just have... Oh, actually, reinforcement range increase. We can have this army attack. Now, the problem is it's a small city. They don't have a siege weapon. Therefore, they can't attack on the turn they siege. Therefore, it's going to be the same amount of time. So we're not actually saving any time. So why not just follow behind? Oh, no, no, no. Not merging. Just stay behind. All right. Not much going on there. This we do need to convert. We need it to be the garrison defense version. Not because I covet any extra, you know, replenishment rate in this local county. It's just that it's more defensive and being on the frontier, um, if we don't have that, we really can't hold it. We're going to pay a bit more for the defensive version. Obviously, this only applies to us since that is our faction unique building. And let's see what else we can bring here. So that's still on the table, but like I said, we want to get as many of these buildings, this one, up as possible before we consider really building out anything else. So this needs to be upgraded to small cities. We can get the extra slot for corruption reduction. This needs to come first. And now with whatever spare money we have left, we can consider these stuff. So let's pop that out. We ran out of cash here, that's fine. We also ran out of cash here, but let's see if there's even anyone interesting. Nope. And she's missing one point to do the discredit faction. And that way we can steal Lu Meng. Just perfect. Minus 10 right now. If we just slam him next turn without him changing any points, we should have him. Um, she has still 17, so she's not going to leave the faction. Unfortunately... We're really just not going to be able to steal people like Guan Yu. But maybe. Uh, he's not disloyal, so we can't turn code him. Because we can hit him with 40 points. 30 from discredit character, 10 from discredit faction. Puts him at 23, but that's not enough to make him leave. Yeah, unfortunate. I don't think we expect any major changes here. Nobel's really afraid now, but he's about to lose more land. That should put him in a more negative... I'm most interested in this, see if anyone's coming, you know, changing their mind, because when they don't want to, it's an extra 100 point on top of the diplomatic value, which makes it pretty much impossible to vassalize them. And it's designed this way to prevent you from just paying outlandish amount to get vassals. 
Now Liu Bei came through, but no one else is willing. Oh, we do have to shuffle the court. Right, so microing here in the court positions and missions are two turns away. Which one haven't we finished? Ah, two temples. Actually, one temple. There's another. Okay, so we moved positions, but there's there's another temple one. Okay, we can build the temple one. We have an empty slot of land somewhere. We can build it next turn because it's two turns away. So we have it finished right in time. Um, one of them have an empty slot of land. There we go. Ah, three turns away here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have a good place for it. Maybe we won't get it. Is the mission really worth it? Uh, it's not bad. Population growth is actually always pretty good. We'll think about it. Maybe we'll rush a building. We probably have the money, but let's uh, continue now. All right, peace deal in the north. Oh, wait. Tong Yu Rei was Liu Dai's faction leader. Why is she a Han flag now? Yep. Oh well, guess their their army disintegrated. Han Fuzong also died of old age. So a couple leader changes there. Cao Pi picked up a pretty nice trait, uh, some extra authority, and also he's going to be a future. Prime Minister or heir, he's gonna be future heir. Let's be real here. Mom is gonna take a back seat, let the son take over. That's gonna help us out. Two characters here. So yeah, we've seen him before. Not that interesting. This is a bandit character. Also not that interesting, unless they have items, which always deserves a little peek here. Nope. Okay. Let's crush this. Uh, this army walked all the way back hoping to retreat to friendly territories and they can't. I am not taking medium casualties so what we're going to do here is quickly fight it. I'll cut this part out. It's very standard sieging. I just don't want to take casualties. See you guys at the end. Alrighty, so we got our clean siege and that should be what's expected given that we have burned officers and that they have no ammo. So free firing by our rangers. And let's see what we have here. So Jiangxia is being split between He Yi and Huangzu. Now if we want to wipe out Huangzu, we need to take this and also take that. If we don't want to wipe out Huangzu, we can just ignore him and go here and let him keep the farmland. That really depends. Um, obviously the farmland's pretty worthless to us. I mean the entirety of Jiangxia is pretty worthless. Hmm, he can keep it. I'm gonna move them up ahead again, just to scout ahead. He doesn't have an army here, so I'm not even scared of him attacking us. He probably has an army here. We'll be seeing them soon. Let's see how they build it here. Forge building, not the worst building, given that there's an industry commandery. School is kind of wasteful here. Food will keep until we need a building slot. Eventually we'll get rid of it. We'll want to build commerce and industry here. Um, this should be upgraded, but... After we fill out three buildings, a uh, state workshop is coming in next. That is Liu Bei's army. Hmm. Should we come here is the question. Probably not. I think the garrison here is what we're going to depend on and we're going to upgrade it more. Um, obviously pretty expensive, but should be okay. We have a new reform. We're going to continue our dash towards the Onyx Dragons. And we're going to get this next. This one doesn't give us much bonus, just some... Trade influence and the buildings are for silk and spice, so not going to be relevant for us. But this is next, five turns away from our uh, extra trade route and plus our first dragon unit. Now, dragon units are specialized units that are available for all general classes. The blue one here, the Onyx Dragon, has ridiculous range 250 for a range unit. For comparison's sake, crossbows 220 and archers 200. So, because they outrange everything. They're going to be really good, especially given the way we utilize range units. So we're going to look for these upgrades for all our archers very, very soon. And even our crossbowmen, we're going to swap all these guys out for onyx dragons. Um, but that's going to come later. We already looked at them. We picked up an axe after that battle. Um, just random. It's not from any generals or whatsoever. We could probably march. Speed things up a little. There's no enemies along the way. We want to get here. But I don't want to be the one attacking them. I want He Yi to do it. 
Um, if they're not willing, we can just sail. We can go here and sail all the way down. Ignore all of them. We'll pop out over here. Um, who owns this? Time out. I believe we're at war with them. You can see the red border on this side. So we'll actually launch a naval invasion over here. I think Taimon also owns this. We can't see, but I believe they do. Um, that's all the army movement. Let's get all the buildings done. Danyang's going. Huainan's going. I am thinking about opting out of upgrading this for now. Huainan farmland. It's not exactly safe, but it's not exactly in danger. Like, who's going to attack us from here? Like, they're going to attack right now over here first. So I think I'll save some money here. I should upgrade this and get an extra building slot. And over here, I want the T version. And apparently we're out of cash. Right. Oh, we should upgrade both of these. So which ones can wait? Chen really can't wait. Chen needs to be defensive. This one can probably wait. And with that money saved, we can't afford it. Oh, we're 40 short. I mean, if that's the case, we might as well build it. All right. After all that, we do build it. Uh, we can't afford any turn code, but we have a spy action. But it's always nice to take a look in case there's any big changes. Not really. All right. Discredit faction time. What is Lu Meng at? He's at 10. Perfect. So he's not allowing us to discredit faction on him, but someone's bound to be willing. It doesn't matter who for discredit faction. Oh, come on. Someone's willing. Really? Oh, there we go. As long as we get one. All right, she's also going to want to leave. The only person we have to be really careful about here is that she's going to want to leave. And then we, the spy just returns to us, which is not what we want, but... Alright, she's gonna leave anyways. We're gonna see her in our recruitment pool, I think. Confirm. Commit. And that puts him at zero. So he's gonna leave during the end turn. Hopefully he comes to our pool. So let's take a look next turn. Let's see, let's see. Now Liu Bao probably wants more of a peace deal. Right. Um, Huang Zhu also. He's scared. Um... I don't want to peace deal with him. I want to take this. I want to expand out, get all of this here. Bill about same thing. I don't know who owns what. And if we need to take these, we need to continue to be at war with him. Ruo Jun wants a non-aggression pack. Okay. He's coming through towards us. Hmm. All right. Nothing too exciting here. Uh, I think we can just continue. All right. Huang Zhu begging for peace. Nope. All right, Liu Bao signs a peace deal with Han Fu. Don't care. Okay, random event. So it looks like He is going to hit this instead of this. Mm, that's a bummer, but we can't do much about it. There's an army in front of us. Anyone interesting here? Not really. This one's still trying to retreat. I don't know where. Uh, since we can't reach that anyways, the Iron Mine, we might as well attack them. Now we want to slip them inside. So we get the debuff. I mean, they're blocking the way technically, so we will chase. Oh, Huangzhu's army is here. Huangzhu has items. Where is he going? He's going for the farmland? Huh. Well, the garrison has been increased, but not fully healed. We need generals. Um, that's the only thing we need to protect against enemy armies. The garrison's good, but no general means we can't match up against them. That's why we have this army here. We're gonna finish them off. This will be a delegate battle. They don't even have range units. Is there anyone we even want to capture? I can't tell about traits, and there's really no items. No one has unique backgrounds, so... Yep, just gonna be a delegate here. It's a wipe, because it's, they retreated, so it's second battle on the same turn. We caught two. So this is Liu Biao's faction. 
Uh, then in that case, we either want to employ and then fire, or we want to release. Basically, we want to treat them nicely so Liu Bao will like us, because eventually it's going to be a peace deal. I don't think we're going to be wiping them out. Now, none of them stand out, so I think we'll make more with just the release. Now, the problem here is we're stuck in the forest, and I don't want to be stuck in the forest. Oh, we can actually speed things up. So all we have to do is come to reinforcement range. This army can attack the iron mine. It's not walled, unlike a small city. So the reinforcement can come in and we can capture this on the same turn. Very good. So this will be a decisive victory if we just delegate, which I think is what I'm going to do. Um, this unit might get pretty injured. We just have to recall for the heal and resummon next turn. So we'll just delegate here. Right. Not that bad, but everyone here is very low health. You will not lose generals in a delegate fight against garrisons. The game just simply does not allow that. So if you can win the battle, your generals will not die. You never have to worry about that. Um, we took some casualties here, uh, and it's in March, so we can't heal, but it should be okay. Shouldn't affect the long-term plan here. We'll be capturing this. See, now, now we want to peace out with Huangzhou quickly, before they get faction wiped. They still have an army here, but they're very scared of us because we just, you know, did a number on them. Um, I'm going to pop this army, like I said. Well, actually, replenishment's so fast that they probably don't have to be recalled. Alright, we're going to pop them out, make them come in. State workshop over here. Let's talk to them. Peace. Nice. So what we want is items or cash up front. No per turn deals because they're going to be gone, right? They're most likely going to get wiped. They have an army here, but they need to go recover some land or someone's going to hit them and they're going to die. I don't think they'll live 10 turns, basically is all I'm saying. So even if they're poor, or they're not. We're going to try to ask for the maximum here and see what they can give us. Okay, so probably, I think we're probably looking at like... Okay, I'll take that. Beats nothing. Alright, and then we can watch them die. Now, Liu Bao is still scared. Yeah, scared out of his mind. Um, and we see that... Tai Mao owns this. Liu Bao does not own that. Uh, that's Luo Jun. If we just look at diplomacy, we can see who we are actually at war with. Means we have to turn south. Um, we probably need about two turns to heal up, though. Our army is pretty injured after that, you know, extended fight forcing the march. Um, but we should be okay. We want to come here next turn. Wow, the road is terrible. We gotta go through here to reach that. Huarong Dao, not the best place for Cao Cao, although he did escape with his life there. That's where he escaped after the Battle of Chibi. Not geographically correct, but the game is trying to incorporate these locations in, and you see Chibi's over here, uh, but it's fine. Um, I guess now the advantage would be if we had traded for that, but I'm pretty sure we ha would have lost it. He would just attacked it, and we wouldn't be able to reach it. Oh, that's fine. This army is also not needed anymore because we did beat them over here. Feels like we're not going to get the opportunity here, so we're going to just pop into the river. And we're going to meet our other army. Now, we're pretty committed to one side of the map, right? We're attacking on one front. Um, the two armies actually probably going to meet up. They're going to attack uh, holding here. Um, Nan, the commander is called Nan. Um, has a city here, we'll attack that, and they will take the livestock farm, and we'll have everything. Nobel has that piece. And then we'll probably round the naval army over here, and we'll have a pretty decent size of land over here. If we get attacked in the north somehow, we will have to summon the third army, which we can definitely afford now. Our economy is improving steadily as we're fighting off the corruption issues that we've been seeing. I believe we can get a new mission, so it's just if we want to get the temple mission. There's two of them, which is kind of tempting. Hmm. There's two temple missions. It's not being displayed because that position's gone, but we had it, so we can finish it. Uh, let's see, do we have an empty slot? Hmm. Nope. Who has the empty slot? 
I know one of them. Okay, so we have empty slot here. We can rush this for 600 and then rush a temple for 900. Finish one set, get this bonus twice, or two different versions of bonus. Minus 5% corruption faction wide. Very helpful. And then demolish because we don't need it. And we'll use this turn to upgrade the commandery. And then now we can refresh the missions without aborting any, or well, abort the Forge Alliance window that that's not happening. Asking us to upgrade a settlement. Uh, spy and time all faction, really? Grand Commandant. This one we just shuffle and it's pretty easily done. No rush. We'll do that right before uh, we are going to recruit an army or if we have to do it before we refresh the missions. Uh, but right now we don't need to. We didn't have to spend too much. We still have plenty to upgrade. And the buildings we're interested in are these. Right? Corruption reduction are the key. That's what's improving our economy steadily. You can see how that 5% boost we got immediately jumped our income. Um, we have everything being built. We actually have spare money left over, which is my definition of success. Oh, wow, what's going on? Liu Bell's entire faction's in uproar here. Wang Zhu has one character. Not interested. Not, I mean, I'm not interested in any of them. How close are we to Duke? Oh, very close. So we're about to get 19 points away. We're about to get Jiaxu for free. So no rush there. And we're about to get the Prime Minister slot open, which is going to be Guo Jia's to take, I believe. That's who we're saving it for. Um, Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Uh, we have spy actions available on her. We have enough points for another discredit character. Lu Meng is still here. Liu Bei did something. Wait. What happened to the faction wide? We. It's almost like that didn't happen. We hit them with discredit faction. That should be 10 points. That is broken. How do we not? It, it's like it didn't get applied. Wow. I'm pretty speechless, because now I don't know how we're going to... Right, we can't get any character then. We might as well empower trade, increase our income. So remember we're at... Let's look exactly how much we can increase here. So trade income is 4.3k and 11k total income right now. Let's see what we can do when we get her to empower trade. So just confirm. And let's see what we have now. Trade went up by 200. Okay, not nothing, but it's not a lot. Um, let's take a look at quick deal. I think we ready. Oh, Gao Gan. It's a little bit different. Huang Zhu is coming through. To <laughs> yeah, he's about to get wiped. Um, I'm not interested in saving him. We got to pay a bunch to save him. So not willing there. All right, we're good. Let's just continue here. All right, Nobel's begging for peace, but we're not going to do it because we want the nun commandery down here and he owns a piece. So nope. Oh, Zheng Jiang's still alive. I mean, we just, I guess we haven't met her yet, but she's in the north. We got the settlement going, construction time decrease, industry income popped up. Okay, this is Liu Bei's character. She was angry and she was, you know, on the bench. So she was acquiring lack of purpose. That's why she left. This is not a bandit, and not that great. Any items on them? Nope. Alright. I want to take a look at the faction again. It seems so weird to me that it just didn't get applied. Like, that's ridiculous. Oh? Gao Shun is now on the bench. We might have an opening. Okay, we'll save us some points. I probably want to just even it out a little, just because she gains so much cover, 20 points a turn, but so little under cover network cost. Anyone? Nope, just less characters than last turn. Not interested. Dashu is no longer on the list. I'm hoping he didn't die, because I would like him. We do miss strategists. Alright, we're going to come over here. Time is going to get hit next. Ooh, a juggernaut. A flamethrower. Fancy that? Don't really care. 
we should be able to reach them next turn. He didn't attack them. I'm a little bummed. Does he have the no, bit enemies? They're enemies. Yeah. I don't know why he didn't attack them. Level up on Dian. Wait. Ooh. Let's get this patience. Now, we could upgrade these to heavy spear guards because he has reached rank 6. Um, but since we are in the river and on march right now, that's not going to be possible. We're going to just keep sailing as far as we can. Probably going to end. We're going to end here. Yeah. It's going to take us a while. We need to get to here. So, and then attack. So three more turns. Um, they're going to take one more turn here, and then we're probably going to run them this way. Anyways, things are going pretty swell. I don't see any threats. No base being a great buffer. We don't have enough points for proxy war until a long time, so no rush there. All right, all the buildings are upgraded. Might as well upgrade the regional city, get a six building slot. This is our main income generator. Who timed out? Oh, a bunch of people timed out, actually. We can get Lady Bien here going forward for the industry boost. Yue Jin can be switched off, maybe into an army. Hmm. Feels like we can boost industry here if Lady Mi is willing. Yes, yeah, she is. Okay. And Huainan has the empty slot. Now, ideally. We can probably go something like the Twin Tian Conscription just because of synergy with the garrison. Yeah, we'll probably do that. And then we'll wait to upgrade this when this is higher tier for the discount. This can give up to 50% discount on this building. So that gets pretty ridiculous. Um, trade port and that. I want to build both of those. But first, any corruption reducing building, right? Those have to go first. That one's ready going. There we go. Now, it doesn't mean you want to build corruption reduction everywhere. Like, for example, Danyang went income, and um, it should because it has the administrator. It's designed for being our income producer. If we get somewhere like Dong in the future, that will also be income focused. All right, let's just pop that. And that's all the buildings. Simon's good. We already looked at character, already looked at turncoats. Quick look at diplomacy. It's dropped a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Alright, not much going on. We can continue. Okay, uh, I don't care about this, but something interesting did happen. Liu Bei took Hefei. I mean, for us, this is not a threat because he's our vassal. We can annex him and all this will be ours. And it's fine that he takes land from us. The bonus of having a vassal is they pay 20% of their income to you every turn. Uh, you can see it through tributaries, 1.8k is from, I mean, that doesn't include everything. I think tributaries also includes like income from c certain trade deals, I believe. Not trade deals, like diplomatic deals. Okay, maybe not. Right, we're getting, oh, we're actually getting 1.839 from Nobe. That's 20% of his income. Wow, he has, he's making quite a bit. Um, But anyways, so that is nice. Um... And we don't have to suffer through the corruption of the territory he's holding. I guess we'll let him keep fighting. Who else is he at war with? Oh, he's done. He was only at war with... Oh, no, no, no. He didn't fight. He annexed. That's his faction unique ability. He annexes Han territories. Cool. That means we can actually go to war with He Yi. Except for the pieces of land he owns, I'm not that interested in. Alright, four characters, one bad item... Let's see. Oh, really good item. Weapons are the best thing in the game because weapon really dictates your power level as a general. Therefore, generals with weapons and general without just completely different. You can have the best unique general with bad weapons. They will lose to a generic with good weapons. So if you see silver weapons, definitely just grab them. Now, is he good? Not really. And he's quite old. So just going to pop his items off. And we'll send him back on his way. Nice having you. 
All right, we'll continue to push for expansions because we want to become Duke. Um, they should probably get more experience, so they should probably come all the way over here for the reinforcement army. Ooh, Nobel has a force here. This is a big battle. Nice. We'll drag them in as reinforcement. We'll fight both. They have almost no ammo now. I mean, because they're on the strategist, the cunning is carrying them to give them a little bit of ammo, or else they would have no ammo. Like... Actually, you'll see a drop once Guo Jia comes in. So let's let's come here. Yeah, once Guo Jia steps in, this goes to zero. These goes to two, and these goes to four. Okay. We still don't have night battle in this army, so we can't even isolate them if we wanted to. This is actually quite a big fight. They have quite a lot of manpower here, including lots of infantry of Jin. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Quite strong. Okay, I would like the labor recruiter. Alright, let's just fight this. Alrighty, so we're back in the livestock farm map. We've seen this a million times. That's where the reinforcement's coming from. That's actually a decent bulk of their force. Um, we have almost full army with guerrilla deployment. We're missing this group here. So we could have, if we had it here, because of general skill, we could have deployed like here, bash them as they came in. We can still do it because this army is quite mobile, so we can actually just rush them over if we want. Yeah, we could do this and just pound them. I don't really care about the group coming from over here. I mean, I'm not saying they're weak. Um, there's a lot of garrison forces in the livestock farm, lots of uh, spear and archers, but we know those guys don't have ammo because they don't have a cunning officer that's giving them extra ammo. So we're gonna put these guys in the front. So when you have two different types of unit here and these have more armor, clearly, actually we want them in this formation so they can block, I think 95%, no, 75% armor? Yeah, 70% of arrows. Put them a little bit in front of your other two units. And those other two can be more flattened out. And this way, all the arrows are going to hit them. All four arrows, because four ammo on those archers. And uh, they will absorb them quite easily. Yeah, I like to leave a little gap, because there's no way they can get through anyways. Let's put Guadia here for fun. So Hodun can come out in case they want a duel. Maybe he can go a little bit ahead. And everyone else in this group is going to make a mad dash. Now, of course, these crossbows are probably not going to make it, but the cavalry should make it just fine. Pop them over here. Crossbow try to get in position before they... All right. These guys, we should micro them. Bomb. Oh, there's a willing duelist. We'll take her. Charge, 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 charge. Wait, why is she out of range? She's clearly in... Oh, wait. It's over there. Oh, it's over there. We'll go find them. Yeah, see, now we get to hit them for tons of damage as they file in. And they have to come in pretty narrowly here. So it'll be pretty crowded. Let's go get the duel with her. I think it's with her. Yep. I don't want her to challenge me. I want to challenge her. Come on, there we go, don't be shy. Oh yeah. Now there is a difference between these troops as well. They can tank. Oh, there's no ammo on that side. Right, I guess it doesn't matter. Well, these guys are really good tanks, maybe they can go here. All right, go back to my crewing these. All right, they have no chance. He even took a flaming rock. He's almost out. Now they're trying to even form a line before they charge us. We could save some ammo for that group, but not really. The most elite troops are on this side. We have so much ammo too because of burned officers. Come over here.
Hmm, and they're moving. Oh, wait. Hit them. Oh, they have a... Oh, we forgot about him. Ability spam. Okay, hit that. Want to see the execute when it happens? Now, those guys have no ammo too, right? Oh, one ammo. One breath of fire. We got her. There we go. Right on time. Now we're going to stop firing for a little bit. It's not worth it anymore. Tilt. Anyone else? Oh, she's not willing. Everyone else is a strategist. Are we on our horse yet? All right, time to chill. We're out. Did our job. Got the experience from the duel. Now it takes them a while to reposition seed weapons, you know? And we'll let the archers and crossbowmen finish them off. Oh, we have some nice abilities here too. Poison volley? No. Actually, we don't have that general. The bandit. I don't think anyone's going to reach us. We have tons of ammos too, just because they also get the boost. I am not firing on any of those archers. They're not worth it. Are they done moving? Okay, they're kind of in position. Go for it. They're very good at evading. Ooh, did we take one out? Nope. No, still four juggernauts. They survived. They're moving pretty fast. Alright, they're getting their arrows on us now. The couple that they do have. Oh, we lost two tigers and... Yeah, well, it's fine. Alright, do you want to thin these out a little? Let's grab them. Call them two. Alright, they're out of ammo. I'm gonna charge them into the, the range unit there. Alright, no more microing here. I'm gonna take the cavalry for a stroll. Counter charge. Wait, where's our cavalry? Wait, it routed? Yeah, we need to get rid of that militia group. Mm. Go through the axe man, not the spear, obviously. There's no front line here, but it should be okay. Well, wow, turtle formation, that's impressive. Rear charge. It's overkill, but we need to get... Oh, don't fire at us. Don't fire at us. Give everyone a boost. Where is that Hold it. Go kill her. Go kill her. You guys take the strategist. Hmm. Quite messy. Kind of want to pull them back a little. We got caught. That's not good. A lot of casualties when they get caught like that. They do have a lot of units. Can't lie about that. Our front line should have shifted. Alright, we're going to have to rely on killing the generals for the morale debuff. Get her. Alright, shift. Yeah, cavalry's taking heavy hits. Alright, kill these generals and we should be all good. Alright, two of them pulled out, everyone else got caught. Break. Go help. 
Come on. That general's gone. Oh my god, stop chasing us. Leave us alone. That's a captain unit. Alright, let's kill her. She's probably what's stopping us here. Kill that. Kill that. We can charge the archers. Tahodun lost his mount. Yep, probably. Ah, too many things to kill. Even some of them round arrows. We're done, right? Who's still who's still fighting? Wait, who are we still fighting? This unit? Okay. I guess we're done now. That was actually quite a heavy battle. Lost a lot of our cavalry. Alrighty. So I think the issue of that battle is we cheaped out on the front line. Four unit. It's a little bit thin. And we can probably get better if we had more. This is Tai Mao's faction. Right, we want to wipe them out. So it doesn't matter what we really do with them. If there's a good item... Ah, it's not even a good item. She's the heir. She's the wife. No, she's not the wife. She's the wife of Liu Biao, sister of Cai Mao. Hmm. Why is she back in this faction? I thought she's supposed to be with Liu Biao. We could execute. Let's just release. I don't really care about the stone rooster. We get a thousand here for releasing all three. And we can no longer do this mission because Tai Mao is wiped. Oh, right. Lady Tai, that was the reinforced marine from Liu Biao. Right, so that's why Lady Tai was there. So we improve our relationship with Liu Bai by releasing three of his generals. He will like us more, even though we're about to go crush him. Cao Cao is rank 7. Wonderful. Uh, mobility is very good for speed. We could use him to get night battle, but... We see that Guo Jia has finally leveled up to the point where he has Night Battle and Fire Arrow for his archers, which will be all Onyx Dragons in the future. So what we're going to do with this army is I'm not very happy with what the performance has been. Um, I don't want to recruit this turn, do I? I mean, we could. We don't have to attack this. We have a naval army to do that. So, oh, Cao Cao superstitious. No, wait, Cao Cao is not superstitious. He's suspicious. Who's superstitious? Is it in this army? Ah. Yu Yong is superstitious. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, doesn't doesn't bother me at all. Um, what we need to do here? We could we could wait till they land and then do the recruiting because we want to switch the court positions to do it all together. All right, let's just wait. Quick peek. Uh, no one really. And the other character needs more time with points being saved up. No one's attacking us anywhere, right? Nobody's making sure of that. I don't know. I don't like this, but nobody doesn't mind, so I guess I don't care either. Yeah, I guess there's not really much to do. I want to upgrade this. Chen. Hmm. This is pretty much full build given our current reform situation. We have one open assignment. This is going to need corruption reduction going on. Okay, I know exactly who needs that one. That one's Danyang. And what we need is industry boost. And Lady Bian's going to go do that. Perfect. 
That should be everything. I guess we can do a diplomatic check. I am still not piecing out with him. It's 44.3. We could... Hmm. No, I don't think we should. Because I want both. I, I could take it for free with a value, of course. But we could wait till we get both and then get a bunch of money from him. Oh, military access will lead to 0.1 though. That's really low. He will, oh, she will like us a bunch. We'll take this. We gotta maintain that friendly attitude until the marriage happens. That's us becoming their vassal. Unfortunate. Alright, we're good to go. Uh, let's continue. Non aggression pack with Luo Jun. Not really interested. Nope. Okay. Things happening down south. Don't really care. Oh, a weapon got crafted. That took a long. Oh, it's a gold one. The D of, of Heavenly Mandate. Okay, this is a really good resolve weapon. I think Sao Holdun's gonna get it. He has a silver one right now. His weapon can go on our son, who doesn't even have a legit weapon yet. And this automatically got equipped on Sao Holdun, right? When you do the swap, the game usually auto equip a weapon, the best one available on them. We also have a good instinct weapon. He has a good instinct weapon. Hua Xiong has a decent one as well. Ta Hoshan, we're not using him as an actual general. I don't actually have another good vanguard. Maybe if we capture one in the future, but right now I guess we don't need it. Um, it's pretty much full healed, despite the heavy casualties we took last turn because of our 50% replenishment. I could just have them take this. We don't have to wait for the naval, it's still going to take them two more turns. We might as well have them keep sailing, because we want this piece of land. I don't know who owns it. This is what we want. So let's go discover who owns it. This way we can even get the peace deal. Ooh, Han Empire still has that. I'm surprised. What has Sun... I mean, I guess they've been expanding this way. Oh, they've been capturing... Oh, they've been colonizing land for us. I say for us because eventually we're going to take it. Okay, that's good news. Uh, we took everything we wanted. This is decent, but I don't want to spend... 1,200 to colonize and then to build it up, just not worth it. Especially at that time, our corruption reduction wasn't going as it is going right now. Alright, we're just going to fight this. So, I guess I want them to pick up experience. It got us a title unlock because of Superstitious. I didn't even think about that one. Alright, this should be a free delegate. We'll take casualties, but we'll heal up pretty easily. Night battle is finally available. That kicks them off from the fight, so no experience for them. Yeah, let's give them some experience. We could have fought this for zero casualties, but we'll take 224. It's quite big, but... Ah. This is the Duke animation. Alright, we're now Duke, uh, because of the prestige gain from capturing a small city. Um, we get money from a very mission. It's a very standard mission. Basically, every rank up there's a mission that gives you money. And next one's become the king or emperor, 5,000. Um, that's pretty good because now we have prime minister spot open. And we're now called the Duchy of Wei. If we, yeah, there we go. That's our capital. And the reason why we are called Wei is because Wei is reference to a location. Most duchy names or kingdom name or I guess dynasty names would be a better term for Chinese empires, dynasties, are based on location. And obviously the game refers to the historical name. It's not going to give us a name based on the location we are actually using in the game. For example, if we were actually 
you know, with this as our capital, we might be some sort of duchy of, you know, something related to Danyang. Um, Danyang is a very minor place. I guess we'll be called Duchy of Wu if Danyang was actually our capital, uh, given Wu is the reference that Sun's clan actually used during that time. Historically, Cao Cao was called Duchy of Wei because Cao Cao had the city of Ye as his capital, and Ye belonged in the Wei commandery. And historically, the Wei commandery had the kingdom of Wei in this region. He was referred to as Wei Wang, or the Duke of Wei. So when they became an actual dynasty, they were referred to as the kingdom of Wei. Uh, but that's in the future now. Uh, we have an army peeking out over here with siege weapons. Bad news for them, we have an extra administrator spot because we ranked up. So we don't even have to shuffle. We can just slap Guo Si, our good old Guo Si. Oh, actually, he's right here. We're going to slap him in here. Put him in Chen, mobile defense. And we're going to send this group right back. And that should be more than enough to handle this group, given how injured they are because they lack supplies and been marching in enemy territory forever. Um, this army is nothing to be worried about. We have them sailing. I am going to... They have a yellow turban variant here. Now that's not a bad building because this is a food production. This is a bad building. We could build tall in Jiang. Oh, in Nan. It's not a terrible decision. It does have a harbor. Nah, I, I think I'm going to pass. I'm going to just demolish this and pop in a state workshop next turn. So this army will continue to sail this way. I am now thinking that the High Empire has it. Yep, they do. It's right here. Uh, do we want to go to war with the High Empire? It basically drags us into war with Dongmin. I don't really want that. Alright, let's talk. 60.9. You... He doesn't want to be vassaled. This is us becoming their vassal. They just don't want to be. I mean, we can't include vassalization in peace deals. That's not allowed. We can get a trade deal with them. They're happy to trade with us. They actually like us because of all the release we did. They're so poor, though. Like, like I would want their Toolmaker. And we still have 35 points to play with. And obviously we can't ask for everything here, but we can probably ask for a good 800 maybe. We can offer him one food back. Actually, he needs a lot of food because he has just the city left. Ah, perfect. That's an even number we can use. Alright, so we peace out. Take his last piece of land that's not his capital. And he's stuck with just the capital city. And a positive really attitude good. towards us. And a trade deal that's giving us 900 per turn. And now, because we did that, we can take a different approach with the High Empire. We can trade for their land. Usually... AI don't actually... Ah, oh, we're not bordering it because there's a pass in the way. What if we trade for the pass? Oh, so expensive. Alright, not possible. Not possible here. Alright, so we're done with this war. We're once again done with our war except for Yuan Shao, who has been at war with us forever. And we have a huge amount of... huge piece of land here. So I feel like the next target's naturally He Yi. Because I don't want to turn on Lady Wu until we get the marriage through. That's going to take a while. And I think this is a good place to end the episode here, which is already running a little bit long. Uh, but we did very good. And we can continue from here, as we're probably going to wipe out He Yi over here. Wang Zhu we're probably going to keep alive. Don't really care about the farmland. And we can even trade all these land to Liu Bei, just to improve our relationship with him. Um, which is probably what we're going to do. So... Hope you guys enjoy this one. We'll see you guys next time. Bye!